Hey everyone, today we will be highlighting some new features available in the latest update of GIMP. One of the biggest releases has been the smart painting capabilities introduced for the bucket tool. After ticking this option, I can fill inside of my line work by clicking and dragging the bucket tool around. You can select from the drop-down beneath Line Art Detection which layer has your line work on it. This is useful for separating the fill layer from the line work layer. You will get the best effect by placing your fill layer underneath your line art layer. Look at the difference between placing the fill on the line work layer versus underneath. Placing your fill underneath the line work helps preserve the look of brush strokes, especially if you're using a softer brush. There are also some extra options to fine tune how the color will fill in your line work. I will make sure that I select the layer underneath my line work and also change the source to layer above the active one. We can create feathered edges on our fill and adjust the size of it with this slider bar. Maximum growing size edits how close the fill will get to the line. To best demonstrate this, I will use the fill tool on the line art layer. And I will also select this source to be active layer. If I start with a low setting, it creates a close outline between the fill and the line. Well, if I set this higher, it completely fills the section and also goes over some of the original line work. Line Art Detection Threshold edits how GIMP will detect the contrast of line art. This can be useful to help GIMP distinguish between lighter lines. See how I can use a lower threshold with darker lines. while the same threshold level will create errors in a lighter line. If I increase the threshold, GIMP now recognizes where this light line starts and ends. Maximum gap length deals with gaps in your line art. Here you can set gap sizes you may have in the line work, and this tool will compensate for that. With this set completely to zero, it fills the entire project when I try to fill in this incomplete line, ignoring the gap in our line work. If we increase this setting, it compensates for the gap and only fills within the line work. Along with this new feature, we also have the ability to color select quickly with the bucket tool. Holding Command on a Mac or Control on a PC switches the bucket tool to color picker mode, and we can change the foreground color as we pick colors. Next, let's look at some new features for our brushes. In GIMP 2.10.10, parametric brushes now support 32-bit floating, which means they offer better color precision in your project. If you want the full effect from this new feature, be sure to set your project's precision to 32-bit float. I can do this by going up to Image, Precision, and going down to 32-bit floating point. GIMP has two types of brushes, Parametric and Raster. In this new version, we can now open raster brushes as images to easily edit them. This option is available in the Brushes dock. To open this dock, go up to Windows, Dockable Docks, down to Brushes. See how these parametric brushes do not have this Open Brush as Image option available. You have to select a raster brush for it to become available. To open up a raster brush as an image, simply click on the brush you want to edit, and then select Open Brush as Image. Now in this new dialog box, we can edit this brush. After editing our brush, we can simply copy it, which will add it to our selectable brushes. 
In past versions of GIMP, this only created a temporary brush, but now we can keep this new brush by simply duplicating it in our dialog. To do this, I will go over to my brushes dialog, select the brush I want to duplicate, right click it, and select duplicate brush. Here we can also name this new brush. And now this brush will be available every time we load up GIMP. The transform tools have also gotten some extra options and functionality. Clicking the link next to normal and corrective allows us to adjust the handles of the transformation without editing the object. If I zoom in on this image, and then click to transform, I can't see the handles. If I resize this down, I can now see the handles. If I unclick this chain link, I can now edit this image with these new handles. We can also do this automatically with the new adjust option. If I click this image to transform it, a dialog box will appear with this new readjust button. As I zoom in and then click Readjust, the handles change size. So now I can edit this image with these new handles. Some individual transform tools have also gained some options. First up, we have the Unified Transform tool. Now this tool defaults to scaling objects with the aspect ratio maintained. You can toggle this on and off at any point in the tool options. In the Perspective tool, we can now constrain the handles, which causes them to snap around instead of moving freely. This is useful for staying on a set line or angle. You can also tick Around Center to cause the perspective to transform around the center point. See the difference between having this option unticked and then ticked. The Scale tool now allows you to use the Around Center option when inputting values into the pop-up dialog. Layer selection has gotten a new feature which allows you to select individual pixels of a layer on your canvas and make it active by holding Option slash Alt plus the middle mouse button. If I use this and click on a pixel, it will scroll through the possible layers as I continue to click. You can see the current selected layer in the status bar. The circular, linear, and zoom motion blur all have new on-canvas editing to help create your desired effect. Simply drag the provided crosshairs around to create new effects. The Healing and Clone tools have gotten new and revamped sample merged options. This allows us to use these tools on a separate layer from our image, so we are not destroying the original we grabbed a sample from. I can make a transparent layer active above my image, and then select with the Healing or Clone tool. This will select the visible pixels available. Then I can paint them on my new layer. To view the full change log of GEMS 2.10.10 update, check out the links in the description. Let us know which new feature you are most excited for. Thanks for watching.